Hi Boopsies, it's me, Tony Bumboni ASMR. Welcome back, welcome, welcome to your video. So yeah, this is your video, so you can check out your videos every day on this channel. Um, all you need to do, really, is subscribe, if you haven't yet, so you can get notified if you would like. And you hit all notifications, that's so important, so you can get your videos every day. Yes, your videos. Alright, and I also have a website, TonyBomboni.com. If you would like to support this channel to help me continue producing daily content and also help keep the lights on, um, you can go check that out at your pleasure. I have so much to offer on there and much, much more. Alright, so let's begin with this video. Today, I will be talking about getting rid of debt, how I got out of debt for the most part, and techniques over the years I've used to help me get out faster, habits, tricks, and tips I've had to utilize to my advantage to enable me to do this. So I'm going to go a little in depth here, okay? All right, so I didn't take notes for this, but off the top of my head, the first thing I highly, highly recommend is just the overall focus. The main focus is to get yourself out of debt, right? What debt is, is just borrowing funds to utilize toward some advantage or in some cases disadvantage. I won't go into too much details. I'm not a financial advisor. Please consult with your advisor. Do not consult with this video for any financial advice. It's just a disclaimer. This is entertainment purposes only, only for relaxation, okay? <laughs> All right, so now that I got that out of the way, we can continue with the video. So a lot of my debt I utilized to my advantage, but the fact that I was continuously using debt was at a disadvantage because now I was literally just working for borrowed money, like money that wasn't even officially mine. Like how messed up is that, right? Like to think about that, like, yeah, a lot of us actually do have no choice, like our houses, like, you know, we have to pay our house off, right? Our cars. I'm still working on those things, but I'm talking specifically about debt, debt, any other added unnecessary debt. Um, I recently just paid off all of mine. It was such a good feeling. I cried like a baby um, because it's been years since I've been um, kind of officially out of debt, right? Okay, again, not counting out like um, things like uh, house and car. Car I'm working on next, I will pay that off. Jesus name, I will. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, everything else just totally, completely. I had so much debt. Oh my god, I had the furniture. I had the lot next door. I had um, this water softener that like, I guess I needed but didn't really need to buy it, but I bought it anyway. And I got way too ahead of myself. I had student loans, pay them all off. Um, I had credit card bills, pay them all off, right? Like, just things that added up and accumulated over the years. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing, right? And uh, debt consolidated loan. And on top of that, um, yeah, it was just piling on. There was another one I forgot, but it was just piling and piling and piling. And the interest rates were so bad. And I was like, yeah, so I, I just, you know, ripped the band-aid, finally got enough um, funds that I was comfortable for giving to finally pay it off in full, and I was like, yes, oh my gosh, like, it's literally, it feels so good, it's such a freeing, liberating feeling, I feel like back to where I was maybe four, five years ago, when I had no debt at all, and just a car, and <laughs> it was just such a nice feeling, and, um, you know, you're no longer working for paying for something you paid years ago. It just is such, like, literally, I think if you just focus and visualize on the feeling that it will give you, uh, you'll get there faster. And I was really persistent and consistent, and it worked 
really, really hard. Um, and, you know, tried my best to do what I could. So I'll go into detail on how I did what I did. I guess not really talking much about myself, but just talking in general how you can be helped um, by paying your debt off. Uh, this is valid for everyone. This works for everyone, this technique, and I've learned this from others as well over the years and really just put my attentive focus on doing that. Um, now, I recommend you doing that first before focusing on other things. I was doing other things like buying more gold and silver, putting more cash aside, you know, putting more in savings aside, stuff like that, like little investments, um, you know, like property and stocks and stuff like that, crypto a little bit, not too much, but um, I'm definitely not a pro at any of those things. I just like to do, or I don't even have, honestly, like that much of any of those things either, um, but I, I just um, do little by little, like little by little, you know, and um, seeing what kind of will be balanced out because in, in this day and age, allegedly, like we don't even know what's going to end up working and what's not, right? So I don't think anyone ever knew to begin with. So I, I, I don't like to put my, all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. So I like to put a little bit here and there. But my problem was I, I could have done it faster, but I chose not to because I was enslaved with the mindset of debt. And I was, that's how I guess I was raised. I always thought we'd, we'd we're never raised with a different mentality because we didn't know any better, right? It's no fault of anyone's. You know, we weren't thrown finance books in our face or taught it in school necessarily that efficiently. Or I just didn't care, to be honest, right? I em emulated what I saw and I did what I did. And what was told um, to me, you know, in my ear, like uh, just mindlessly like, okay, you know, whatever. Um, this is why I say get a financial advisor. <laughs> That'll be best for you. But also listen to your own heart and your own intuition. That's another thing. But let's move on. Focus on tackling the debt first and foremost. Don't do what I did. Don't start buying gold and silver just because you have extra reserves. No, like you focus on paying that debt first. I could have paid off my debt like years ago, but I just, I had the money. It's not like I didn't have it. It's just I chose not to because I was like, okay, let me focus on getting other things or, you know, working on other things in general um, or doing other things rather than, um, uh, like, when I had extra, I, I just put it aside. I didn't really put it toward tackling the debt when I should have, right? I always thought, oh, that debt's going to be paid off in two, three years. I don't have to worry about it. It can just continue the low monthly payments. I'll let it marinate and sit there biggest mistake ever. I was literally just working for that because then one one time like one of my credit cards screwed me over so hard and they were like, oh yeah, you paid this down. Now here's an extra thousand dollar charge because of the 30% interest at the time. It was almost 30%. I was like, OMG. So um, yeah, biggest mistake ever was not to tackle it. And then like all my payments for that year were basically starting over because I, I paid like a like um, probably a thousand toward that bill that year and then they slapped another thousand so it's like I was back to where I came from so it was like not moving it was not going anywhere uh, and I was just let it, being lazy honestly and thinking oh you know I put enough toward it it's just gonna eventually go down right I had that mindset of like oh debt can just sit there and I can do whatever I want so do not do that any extra savings you have, I would say even honestly, just my opinion, my opinion, not, it's not fact, it's not accurate, please, but, um, the best thing in my opinion would be to, um, any extra savings you have, immediately put that to tackling the debt down, right? You want to have some savings to be comfortable, that's why I did what I did, I was like, okay, you know, what if things change, you know, I need some extra, like, you know, you always want to have like six months at least of reserves, right? To pay your bills and stuff. Which um, I pretty much did and outdid, you know, just to be safe. And that's, I chose to do that first. Um, and then tackle the debt down. So I did it opposite. But, you know, you would probably want to do the debt first. Especially nowadays, allegedly, with things changing. You just never know. So, um 
not to be a slave to the debt, not to owe any man no money. Okay, that's just how I choose to live my life now. If I cannot afford to pay it in full, heck, <laughs> probably if I can't even afford to pay it in full twice over, double the price, I'm not going to buy, even if it's a car. Nope. I said I'm keeping my vehicle until that vehicle is on, It's if it's wheezing, if the if it's squeaking, if it's on its last lifeless breath, I'm going to keep driving that vehicle. I said no more. I'm not a slave to no man, no bank, no company, no loan, nothing. That's just how I choose to live my life now. And I'm going to be cheap. I'm going to buy cheap clothing. I'm, gonna, you know, I'm not going to go out to eat. And it, it, like, literally, I was, like, super cheap for a good two years. And I swear, like, the difference in my life and how much better I sleep at night is priceless. You cannot get that back. <laughs> you will thank yourself. You will pat yourself on the back later. You will say, wow, I actually got way far ahead, even than most people like that can do even at my age, right? So you're going to, you're going to thank yourself no matter what age you are. It's if you're 50, if you're 70, 90, it's never too late. Okay. Now, yes, there are emergencies like medical emergencies. Otherwise I get you some health insurance. I finally, um, was capable of, uh, doing that and um you know in case because you don't want to you know go bankrupt and then screw yourself even more financially so you know you always want to have some at least at least an emergency uh, insurance right uh, disaster uh, one don't pull out any unnecessary loans you know things that oh you know it's exciting just to see that number in my account and i can pay it back whenever and i can use it to invest and buy a new business whatever Great if you know how, even in real estate, maybe you can pull those, maybe pull escrow out of home. Ugh, I really don't recommend those, in my opinion. I'm, I'm more simple in my ways. I'm very, very simple. I just have a simple strategy, and that's peace of mind, right? Like, what will make you sleep better at night? Because I noticed the stress it brings, even on my family in the past, with debts, um, and seeing how it influenced their lives and their way of thinking um no thank you right like I, I would rather live my life in peace and comfort even if it means I don't earn that much or I'm not like utilizing debt and leveraging myself to grow my assets and my net worth like that crap doesn't matter to me anymore honestly I would rather live a simplistic life knowing that I don't owe anyone anything um to an extent, right? Like, we all have to, like, work to pay. We still have to pay the property tax. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, even if you pay off your house, you still have the property tax. You still have to um, pay your car insurance, you know, like, electric bill, water bill, whatever. Okay. Right? Like, I mean, it feels sometimes like you have to pay just to breathe. But um, getting rid of debt will at least get you a better, more comfortable lifestyle where you can feel like you can breathe more than you being trapped in it. So focus on that one thing at a time now. How can you focus on tackling it? One step at a time. Focus on the, probably the biggest debt first. Don't minimum payment that bigger debt. If you have a loan of 10 grand, a loan of five grand, and a loan of two grand. Focus on that 10 grand one. If the minimum payment is like $200, pay 500. You know what I'm saying? Um, because the big beast will keep eating you alive and getting bigger. The little ones can do too, especially if you have like five little ones and ten little ones. Oh my gosh, that can really eat your pocket over time. And minimum payments on those don't necessarily help either. But tackle the big beast first, okay? Because that's the one that's going to get you um, down financially okay and like if you're trying to pull out more loans in the future or something not that you should maybe but for emergency use you know they're not going to prove you because they're saying oh my god you have this like 10 grand loan right and then yeah so they usually tend to focus on the bigger one rather than the ones that are like you know thousand dollars two thousand whatever also some advice stay away from people who ask you for money ask you to loan money to them because that's also a debt right like now they have to pay that back to you 
it's still a debt. You're in debt to, to someone's in debt to you. You're in debt to someone. It's the same thing. Uh, now they owe you money that you could have used to pay off your debt or live your life. You know what I'm saying? So there's other kinds of debt. There's um, Please make sure you're responsible if you use it to leverage yourself financially, like with real estate, okay? Because what if the property value goes pl plummets, right? Now you have more debt. Okay, so um, double check with that. Um, I'm just saying, if I have, let's say, 10 grand lying around and I see something worth 20 grand, I'm not going to pay my 10 grand and pull out a 10 grand loan to get it. You know, if it's something $500, fine. Obviously, you can afford it, right? You can pay it in full. And even then, you question. It's always good to have the mindset of, do I really need this thing right now? Nowadays, I only buy if it's like for my emergency, even my preps, my stock supply. But lately, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to get even more preps because the shortages allegedly, you know, some. Um, I'm just, you know, in that mindset, like, what can I do now even with inflation allegedly? Like, my about dollar is going to be worth less with time allegedly. So, um, what is it that I can do to leverage myself, right? Um instead of even like leveraging other people because if you think about it, when you buy property you're actually leveraging other people as well did you know that like you're actually like okay buying for the property now you just gave someone your money so like okay but what if they fooled you and that property has like a leak or something or you know something you don't know uh, a sinkhole you got to look in all these things but um that's another video perhaps but yeah moving on uh, you want to be smart with your money. You want to utilize it to your advantage, but not get too greedy. I'm noticing a lot of greed nowadays, okay? People thinking that everything's going to just keep going up, 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 allegedly, um, where it may allegedly not be the case, right? That's life. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not predicting anything. I'm not saying I know everything. I'm not saying I know what's going to happen. I'm just saying, okay? So um, right now, I think it's the time to play the game of life smart, all right? If you have those extra thousand coins you're going to keep those thousand coins unless you maybe want to spend 10 percent of that thousand toward your preps or something like that all right and preps is a wide variety it could be food it could be gold it could be um honestly just a first aid kit like it could be anything it could be just putting it aside honestly if you don't know what to do with it just put it aside okay you don't have to invest it even investments are risky now allegedly so um that's what I got to say about debt overall is tackle the big one and then um, target the smaller ones. Minimum payments suck. Try doing a little more than the minimum. Actually, it makes a dramatic difference in your loan if you pay even just a few more dollars more than the minimum because of those interest rates. Try not to pull out cards or loans with higher interest rates, you know, get that credit score up, even with a high credit, super high credit score, like, these, these interest rates honestly still suck, in my opinion, um, that's just my opinion, um, yeah, so, uh, I use credit cards to pay stuff, but, like, I always pay them in full every month, so I don't really, like, look at it, for the interest rate, but at the same time, you know, if you need it, you need it, right? You got to get a low payment. Um, I've had better experience with loans rather than credit Loans have way less interest than the credit cards do, obviously. So, um, yeah, just focus on that if you can and make it like a short loan, like no more than, I would say, maybe three years, five years is a stretch because that's a long time and you, you could really set yourself back okay it's a big chunk of your life and you know what do you want to like work five years for that i don't think so um even if one loan you just have one loan uh do you really want that you know eating away at your pocket um behind your back right over time and it adds up right all right so um if you have the money it's not necessarily don't pull out the, the loan okay just use the money if you have to don't just pull the loan to say oh I don't want to waste my money now. You know, that was the mindset I had. Like, oh, I had the money, but then I just pulled a loan because I was like, oh, you know, I don't want to spend it now. Like, how dumb of me, honestly. And I'm not judging you if you, that's what you did or that's how you live your life, but um, do you really want that sitting around? And just, like, you're going to have to pay it eventually anyway, so why not now? You see what I'm saying? So, um, that's just another thing, all right? So, um, yeah, 
when you pay off your debts, you're gonna now be able to save all that money you put toward the payments. So if it was like five or 10,000 a year, now you're gonna save an extra five, 10,000 a year that you can use maybe, heck, you can even maybe gamble with half that if you would like and put it in investments of any kind, right? And uh, watch it grow even more rather than just sitting in the savings with a low interest rate, right? So um, there's so much you can do and you have so much freedom and empowerment when you're not owing anyone anything. So um, a lot of people don't consider paying off their car because especially nowadays they're very expensive, but it is a good recommendation, especially now with prices increasing on vehicles, you're better off just ending up paying the repairs on the car and keeping your car, you know, <laughs> especially with used cars being so high right now. I think the average is like 30 grand almost. So yeah, don't sell it. Right? <laughs> yeah, you, uh, unless you really need to, of course, but um, not recommended, right? Uh, you want to work on paying that loan. Don't make it a six. Now they offer even eight year loans. I don't know about that up to you, but I'm just saying apparently like, um, less is better, right? Um, I was dumb enough to have like a long term one and, um, I'm going to work on just over time, um, bringing that one down cause, uh, it's just eating at you. Like even if you don't even use your car, you're like, much, you know, you're, you're paying for something you don't even use much as even a horrible feeling. It's just sitting in your garage and you're looking at it and you're like, oh my God, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's been a few years and I only paid halfway of this off and I have a few more years to go and, uh, you know, you get the anxiety sometimes like what if you have that repair or, you know, you have to change your tires and all this. You, on top of that, you got to pay the insurance, the oil changes. Oh my gosh, it adds up. So, um, yeah, I can really hold you back, you know. A car is like a second home to all of us, so now we gotta pay our home and our second home, like really, and now we gotta insure that second home, right? Like, and this home as well. Oh my gosh, so, um, especially if you have to pay parking fees and stuff, yeah, you gotta pay to clean your car, change the blades, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a lot, so, um, the debt will only bring you down and hold you back if you can be fortunate enough to pay off your house or to work on paying it off over time. I don't know how some people do it. They pay, pay it in five and ten years. I'm like, oh. praises to you. Um, unless your house is like a shack worth hundred grand <laughs> at the time. I don't know how people pay it off, but yeah, good for you. If you're able to do so and you're, you're abundant and fortunate and blessed enough to be able to do that. Um, it's the same principle, right? If, if your house is the biggest debt, maybe work on tackling that down. I used to say no to that because um, <laughs> it can be an asset based on how you look at it and utilize it. So why would you continue contributing to something that you could just end up selling and getting money for? Like, right, like you're going to get it back eventually anyway, I guess, if you contribute to paying it off faster. But it's always was like one of those things like, okay, we all have a rent or a mortgage to pay. Why would you want to tackle that when we have so many other bills in our life and unexpected expenses that arise? But nowadays I do see it. Now that I paid everything off, I feel like more, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of one of the next goals is to um, really lower that because then you're going to lower your payments by having less of a loan, right? And you're just going to, it compounds in itself, right? And you can end up paying it off even faster uh, by lowering those payments, by doing that strategy, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, and imagine all that extra money you pay toward rent or mortgage that, or, well, obviously, you can't do this with rent because it's not yours, but toward the mortgage uh, that you could be putting aside to even more to your advantage. And it, it compounds the less that you have, the more wealth you're going to accumulate over a faster period of time than other people because you are now using even more money so long as your income stays the same or rises. Well, nowadays it has to rise because of inflation allegedly, but yeah, so uh, what can you invest in to tackle inflation allegedly, right? Like what are things that you can put towards rather than debt? That's only going to bring you back. Money sitting there doing nothing is only going to bring you back as well allegedly nowadays. So um, figure that out for yourself and it can be a stressful subject, but it doesn't have to be. We just have to tackle one day at a time and realize a plan, right? Um, 
I even recommend tackling like, heck, if you can put like $5 a day, $10, $20 a day toward it alone, do it. Keep feeding into it because that will lower your interest even more and the amount that accumulates rather than paying it once a month, which will just take some time to calculate in their system, not show up on your score right away and your report and also um, generate that month's interest rate rather than Okay, if you pay it every day little by little, it drops dramatically and actually quicker than a one-time payment. So um, you do, again, what's best for you, what's within your comfort zone. Um, I've been doing it like once a month, that kind of thing. That's just how I chose to do it. Better to just let it go, not focus on it heavily every day, not obsess over it, not stress over it. But if you feel crippled by it, um, like I did maybe like four years ago, almost, then yeah, like it's going to really bring you down and you're going to put so much of your paycheck toward that that it's just not going to be fun and you're just always going to have to uh, work to contributing toward it and that's no way to really live and now you have to like, you know, deny hanging out with your friends because you're not comfortable because you don't have much because you just put another payment toward this big loan you just got and it's just a continuous feedback loop cycle and I'm never going back to that lifestyle ever again so long as I live unless you really really have no choice and have to but that's just you're gonna make it where you will have a choice right um, we all choose what we do at the end of the day and our take responsibility and accountability for the actions of our lives so um, that's kind of my guidance and advice on loans and let's see if any paying off of your debts let's see if anything else I have that comes up in my mind, um, I definitely always felt like I had more when I didn't have loans. I definitely always felt like I was free to just, you know, even buy that expensive dinner for myself, treat myself, go wherever I want, right, and spend the extra cash. And now, even I'm, I'm, I've gotten to a point where I don't even do that anymore. I'm like, you know what? <sighs> even without debt, I'm not going to even go back to doing that. That now, oh, I have more money, now I'm going to spend it even more. No, that's not true, right? <laughs> like, especially nowadays, like, it almost feels like I don't have even more, right? Sometimes it's like, oh, uh, you know, because everything's gone so much in price. And, you know, it, people don't realize, even if you make a lot of money, like, it is biting into everyone. It's feeding into everything. And, um... <sighs> Pay the debt first before you use your funds, not alone, but your funds to leverage yourself with things like real estate, right? Where you can afford to pay those things in full, maybe even twice over. That's the best approach. Be patient. Don't get greedy instantly. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself the time. Have a budget plan. Talk with an advisor. Like I said, I had to write down so many numbers. My head was spinning like this loan, this payment, this much time is going to take to pay off. This loan, this payment, this much time is going to take to pay off to be consistent. Okay. Calculating crunchy numbers. What if I pay this much every month? How much time is going to take to pay this month off? So you want to do that and jumble that, especially with multiple loans. If you have too many loans and it'd be a better deal in a shorter period of time with a lower interest rate to debt consolidate, do that. A debt consolidated loan where you can just Pay out and get a lump sum of money, pay off all those loans you have and lump it into one loan that is a lower interest, less time to pay off, and less payment. If you can utilize that to your advantage, do that. That's the best approach for paying off debts. In fact, a way a lot of people end up officially getting out of debt, and that's, I had to actually do, I believe, two loans like that. I did one and then I realized, oh, I could do one more with these other ones. So, and then that's how I finally did it. I lowered the payments and then I recently I just boom, tackled, tackled the last of the, the lumps on my head. And I just said, you know, I just ended up having a little extra more than I expected. So I was like, yep, yeah, let me just uh, once and for all surprise attack, finish it off and then be done with it. You're going to end up doing what works best for you. That's just what I did. And, um... I believe that's it. If you have a great credit score, excellence credit score, right, it can be tempting to look at that number and say, now I can do this because of the score and all oh, my income went up and I can pull out a loan and get a new pool or a new car or whatever. If it costs 50 grand and you don't have 100 grand sitting aside, don't do it. 
Okay, so do it. All right. Heck, if you don't, even if you don't have fifty grand sitting aside, so do it. So do it. All right. Um. Yeah. So that's with anything you buy. All right. Even if it's like a two hundred dollar thing. The other day there was something that cost like oh, two one two hundred dollars. I looked at it and I just said to myself, so do it. So do it. Like you know, if. <laughs> Especially if you already spent too much in one day, you're like, zone do it, okay? Um, it can be tempting, but that's how we always tend to, as human nature, fall back to old ways. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's tempting. I could put this in my credit card and still pay it off in full, but zone do it. Because, you know, that 200 you could use maybe in the future to something else. Or, you know, invest into something that can actually grow into more, right? Over a period of time. So, um, you want to play it smart, right? You always want to act like you can't afford things. I notice a lot of people even tend to live like that nowadays. Like they have it, but they act like they don't, right? Um, that's honestly the best way to live is to be kind of cheap sometimes within your limits and boundaries, uh, healthy boundaries, I would say. Okay. Don't overdo anything. Um, and try to encourage others to live a similar way, right? Because why would you want you seeing after maybe what you've experienced if you're watching this video and you, you need the, the guidance today or some, some the reminder, at least maybe you already know all this stuff. Why would you want to promote that lifestyle to others that you love, right? So um, be definitely be around like minds, be around people who agree, have the same mentality, who look at money the same way that can help keep you in check and remind you and encourage you and promote you to um, empower yourself, be better, right? And don't buy the house. Honestly, I had almost no choice when I bought this house. It was kind of like a rush decision, kind of an emergency. I won't go into detail, but I had to just, you know, um, make the quick decision, right? And it was still my choice. I, I could have said no, right? But I said yes for a reason and something called me and compelled me here, but don't buy the house. Even They say like, if your income is not, okay, if the more, if your income is less than half of the loan of the mortgage, of the house, don't do it, right? Don't do it. And that's a good principle to live by. And I know that's extreme because most places only require like three to f four times um, the rent slash mortgage, right? Like the, um, for rent, I think it's two to three times. For mortgage, I think it's three to four times. Sometimes two and a half, but eh, not if you're self-employed, <laughs> taxes and all that. But I, I, I say it has to be like um, like four to eight times. Like I'm, I'm not kidding because, um, yeah, it, it 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 will eat into your pocket over time. Like, do you want to give like a third or a fourth of your paycheck to just where you live like that's a lot you know so I do agree with the principles um someone said I forgot who but if you're like if your house is was like um 300,000 and your income is not 150,000 a year don't do it I agree I honestly agree with that um again I know for a lot of people that's like whoa I know I get it but like I agree I honestly agree because um yeah that's just you'll be so much more comfortable. Like, why would you make yourself suffer, right? Like, you'd be so much more comfortable knowing that you could over afford this house, like, easily, right? It just feels so good to know that. So, um, yeah, I'm glad I did that with this house. Like, I was able to, you know, um, easily afford uh, even over four times um, the payment. But, like still I was like questioning like okay why did I do this you know people were living with me at the time and then they moved and I was alone I was like oh my god could I afford it thankfully I could but still it was like you know I felt like um I could do better and now someone moved back in and I was like oh you know so now like if you can utilize your house for example I know I'm kind of going out there but this still all kind of is linked with debt because your house can be a debt you know in most people's cases um most people don't have their house paid off so <laughs> Uh, unless they're like really old and you know have inheritance and all that stuff um most people don't so there's a lot of mortgages out there and uh this country is kind of like running off of that running off of you know 
um, debt allegedly like operating off of you know relying on people to pay and that's what makes the economy function is that people are paying their bills and time and stuff like that so it's a, a feedback loop so feeding money into the system allegedly so yeah i would say that um if you can utilize this house of yours to rent it to someone right that would be a, a good use of your resources that would then be automatically an asset for you a money-making machine right um yeah that, that would be very good for you to do so that you don't have to owe anything right like that then others pay it for you and you can just live for free i did that for like about three years like i pretty much had no payment because it was just you know um rented to people so yeah um there's ways you can go around and um do things to your advantage to where now you have that extra um a few thousand a month just able to utilize to other things that can prosper you and uh to treat yourself even more okay um so that you can uh, then continue that cycle and once you get on it you never look back you never want to look at another loan application ever again not even for a car okay and if you could just stay in the same place for years either pay it off or pay a lot of it off and then sell it now you have all that money you could use to more investments and more of a future for yourself and and uh, you know bigger down payment for another house and maybe you can downgrade you know you, you don't have to have five bedrooms right so um what is it that works for you and how you want to live your life maybe you like nice things maybe wait to buy those nice things rather than um minimum payment on a credit card to buy that nice thing right do we really try to have to impress people do we really need that extra education when we won't even use it right do we need that bougie furniture or that louis vuitton right so there's so those nice clothes so there's so much we can consider when doing things and investing our resources think about all the work you put into making that money think about all that energy and work in the time of your life that you will never get back and you want to spend that even more money should be a tool not something that traps you so um if we look at it that way and try our best to live by those principles it'll make life easier and i in no way am perfected this craft i look at other people um sometimes in my circle and i'm like oh my god i have nothing compared to you know i thought i got ahead and i was like wow you know put, put to shame let's put it that way not, not really but like put myself to shame and, and guilt because i was like oh my god like wow i could have like done things differently and i thought this was the way right so um and i don't mean to do that for you i don't mean to uh, guilt trip you into this or anything this is just kind of like a chill video where you can just maybe realize things with me and you know as i'm speaking i'm also learning as well like oh or being reminded of what i could do now differently to to make a change for myself and a change for others right and to have more to even help your family right the other day there was like some emergency a family had a, had a, had to give a couple thousand toward you know and thank god i had that you know uh easily or i could just say easily here you go you know um and then you don't you don't know maybe a friend will ask you for that i've had friends ask for you know help before and car payment and this and that so you know even those things add up and uh you know you can out of the kindness of your heart give or you know make it in a form of a loan um uh, but whatever you decide to do you know it's a peace of mind knowing that you can be of help to someone and that you can um just be there and be present and enjoy life because you have a plenty abundance it's an irreplaceable feeling rather than the lack the black hole of owing of being in debt and i listen to um people who talk about finance like literally every day so i know i'm not just speaking from inexperience but also my own experience as well having suffered through what it's like to owe all right and uh to see that 
email that, oh, you owe this amount, and this is how much to do by this, and oh my gosh, I'm itching when I think about it, and now that that's not going to be the case anymore, and mostly all my bills are auto debit, you don't even look at it, you don't think about it, wow, you have control of your life now, you have the ability to grab the wheel and take it where you want, this is a new chapter, and visualize that, close your eyes, and focus on how that looks like for you, what that could mean for your future, for your kids, future generation, you know, what if you pass, unfortunately, and now they're responsible for those debts, right? So we want to also not just think of ourselves, but what this can do for others in our world. How would it be to leave our children behind a paid-off debt-free house, a car, cars, right? So what is it you want? Put it on your vision board, slap that, I am debt-free, you know? Every day I would say, and I thank God in, in, in Christ Jesus every day, every day, and I, I, every day I would say, I'm debt free in Jesus' name, and um, now that it's here, it, it just, the peace is indescribable, there's calmness, and I only wish that for you if that's your case, if you're in a situation where you want to get out, of that situation. Okay, do what works best for you. Pray, meditate, visualize, all right? Breathe deeply. Do that four corner deep breath in. Hold, deep breath out, hold. Okay, um, set a mantra, set an intention for your day. What are you going to do? Because you have the choice and you empower yourself to have the choice to decide how you're going to tackle what you're going to tackle today. And gosh, the feeling of just putting that $10 aside toward that debt every day is just going to be irreplaceable and priceless. And no one has to know your business. No one has to know. You know, no one knows for so long. Everyone thinks I always have it like that. But everyone thinks, oh my God, I could afford to buy whatever I want. Laugh out loud. Literally like, laugh out loud, no one knows my situation, my business, where I've come from, how much I've suffered, how much I've had to owe, what I've had to deal with, I'm just like everyone else, I'm pretty much, I feel average, honestly, and um, I just choose to live my life a little bit more of a humbler approach, and my honest opinion, and I don't have to show what I have, I don't have to drive that, I could easily afford the nicest <laughs> car, I mean, I, I can't like, like, say, like, I can easily afford it, because, like, if I don't have it to pay in full twice over, I can't really afford it, but you know what I'm saying, like, I can easily pull that loan out and show off and buy all that and have the, the cash to make a fat down payment, am I gonna do that? No, it'd be foolish of me, and I would be a fool to live for someone else, and I'm never doing that again, I'm never living to lavishly, luxuriously show what I have, because did that ever enable me to keep friendships? No. They always looked at me, like, differently, and, um, like an ATM machine, honestly, and, um, that's a cycle I was finally breaking free from the spell of, um, because I was raised with family who at one point had a lot, and I was always going on trips, and kids at school always make fun of me, and poke at me, and, you know, I'd always have piles of homework back, and so it was a cycle I was repeating for a very long time of having friendships who asked me for things, asked me for even lunch money, asked me for help, for this and that, and I just said, you know what, I'm no longer going to do this, because now I'm even contributing my own funds toward their life, and what's that done for me? Nothing, absolute silch, garbage, okay, so... Um, you want to empower yourself to where where you take a stance that you've had enough of your past suffering and ex negative experiences and cycles. So uh, when you take a grasp and a stance of that, and I hope you do, and you realize what needs to be fixed and done, then do that. And I'm telling you, it's going to suck at first, but after five years, ten years, however long it takes you, there's no rush in this life. You're going to feel so much better. And I hope, you know, don't even thank me. I just, I hope this is just something that has helped you along your journey, and thank you for watching. I pray I covered everything, and I will see you poopsies in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.